this is a re-record of next eight. Let's start with numerical stability. Consider a simple neural network. We have D layers here. The input of the Tth layer is called HT minus 1, and the output is HT. This layer has a function called FT, transfer the input HT minus 1 into output HT. Given input X to the network, the final output of Y is we first put X into the first layer F1 until, until to the last layer FD, and then fit into the last function L. The thing here we want to consider is compute the gradients of the loss L with respect to WT. WT is the parameter of the teeth layer. Remember the chain rule, we have partial L over partial WT equals firstly partial L over the last output of the teeth layer, which is HD. Then we compute the gradients layer by layer for example, we first compute the gradients over the last layer, which is partial HD over partial HD minus 1. HD is the output of the this layer. HD minus 1 is the input of this layer. So we apply by D minus T times until we get partial HT plus, plus 1 over partial HT. Finally, we get the, the output of the teeth layer with respect to the parameter, which is partial HT over partial WT. The key thing here, think about the middle of these equations, that is we do multiplication over D minus T matrix. So this could be cause problem. The one of the problems is called gradient exploding. So soon that we use a number larger than 1, here we use a 1.5 and a power to 100, then we get a very large number. The second issue called a gradient vanishing. That is, we use a number less than 1 and power to a larger number, and then we get a very small number. So these two problems cause the training issues. Let's consider a con concrete example. Consider we have a multi-layer perceptron. That is, we remove the bias for simplicity. So because it's MLP, so we know that given the input HT minus 1, which is the input to the teeth layer, we know the function is equal to WT times HT plus uh, minus 1. WT is the parameter, HT minus 1 is the input. And then we fit this one into the activation function sigma. To compute the gradients of this layer, we know that by chain rule, we first compute the gradients with respect to the activation function, which the output is a vector and the input is another vector. We know that the gradient is a matrix. So here is actually a diagonal matrix. It's a diagonal of sigma prime, prime is the gradient function of sigma, and fit into the input t, wt plus ht minus 1. And then we compute the gradients of the function of the dense layer function, which is simply just the wt transpose. So then apply the chain rule that we know that we want to do d minus 1 multiplications, that is a product of d, d minus t diagonal matrix and also a bunch of weight matrix as well. Then, what we are going on? For, for example, let's use a ReLU as activation function. That is, sigma x is just the max of 0 and x. So then we know the gradient of function of sigma is just if x larger than 0, then it is 1, otherwise it's 0. So now the element of this d plus t multiplications, it could be from just the, the products of all these parameters, because the diagonal matrix can be either 0 or 1. So then if wi contains 
numbers larger than one and d plus t is pretty large which means either the length was deep this large or we use bottom layers close to the input which is d small then the element of the products may contain very large numbers so this cause gradient exploding so what problem is gradient exploding in the streaming case we can run out of range we got infinity values so when we got infinity values long thing we get correct numbers this is especially true if we're going to use 16-bit floating point so this point have a very small range it's pretty easy to go infinity even that we still are in the range which is we didn't get infinity values this large values could be sensitive to the learning rate if we didn't choose a small enough learning rate then we apply very large modification into the weights by SGD then the larger weights in the next time cause the even larger gradients so it can be go infinity but if you choose too small learning rate then we maybe got no progress because we each time we apply little values into the weights and because the value can be changed in a very wide range then during training could be very large could be very small and we need to change the learning rate dramatically during the training uh, procedure according to the actual values so this caused a lot of trouble and you, what you can see that it caused instability during training the second problem is called gradient vanishing so again let's use the previous multi-layer perception example but here we change the activation function into sigmoid we know the sigmoid definition is 1 over 1 plus e2 minus x and the gradient function of the sigmoid is just a sigmoid function times 1 minus the sigmoid output so here we draw a picture of the sigmoid function the x axis is, is the input x and the y is the function value the important thing here is that the origin line is a gradient function of sigmoid what we can see that even a small number of even the x value is not too large for example slightly larger than 4 or slightly smaller than minus 4 then we get very small gradients and the problem here is that because the gradients it's a multiplication of all this diagonal matrix here and then this diagonal matrix can contain very small numbers then the gradients is just the products of t minus t d minus t small values so which cost the elements could be very small so what's the problem with gradients vanish and on the extreme case the gradients are zero because too small especially if you're using 16 4 bit floating point if it's like more than 1 e minus 6 then all these values are zero if we get a zero gradients no matter how we change the learning rate we still get zero update for the gradients so which means no training progress and especially that with bottom layers which is close to the input um, which means that t is small then the bottom layers have smaller gradients compared to the top layers which is close to the loss function and then only top layers will wear a trend because it get a larger gradients and the other bottom layers we get small gradients so on a consider streaming case that we have 100 layers and the top layers the top 20 layers get a very large gradients and the bottom 80 layers get almost zero grad gradients then it's almost equals to just a train a, a network with 20 layers which means it's pretty hard to make a deep neural network and also it's caused to a lot of other troubles we're going to talk about later 